a laser machine I sold to the King of Jordan. We're here to promote and bring awareness to manufacturing. Try to, to push the envelope every day. Dream big and go after the impossible every single day. Hey, Thorsten in the house. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for coming down to Texas and visiting us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Heck yeah. Oh, man. Absolute. So we got the big man. So good. We were just in Germany having dinner. Then we had dinner last night. And then uh, now we're on a podcast. Yeah, badass. <laughs> <laughs> so good. good. So good. good. So CEO of Heller. Is, is that the title? Is it global? What is the exact title? Yeah, it's the yeah the the chairman of the board of Hella. So yeah, I don't care if you call it CEO or managing director or <laughs> whatever. I mean, he is the man. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's a hands-on job still, right? We're talking about the machine tool industry, so it's um, yeah. Awesome. Y you gotta awesome. get still be ready to get your hands dirty. That's yeah. exactly right at all levels. Hey, you got you must have a pretty. S stacked resume to get that position how, how long have you been in the current position you were an advisor for a while for heller yeah that's true so i'm um, in that current position only since the beginning of this year been working um with heller already um, last year um on supply chain procurement projects mm. and strategic a uh, couple of strategic projects and uh, yeah decided to take on that responsibility Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Super good. And I, I actually met you in another life. I mean, same life, but you were the CEO at another very large company at DMG Mori. Yeah, CEO for, um, for Americas. At yeah. That time. That's when we met. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's kind of my history. I worked for DMG Mori for yeah more than 15 years. Wow. In wow. all different kinds of positions. I actually had a big mentor, um, the former CEO of DMG at that time, still called Gildemeister, mm. oh. um, Dr. Kapitza. Um, he, um, yeah, I sent my greetings. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, That's and he awesome. Gave me, he gave me the opportunity to develop in, in very different kinds of responsibilities um, because I went to school in New York. And uh, um, yeah, therefore I... I have a passion for, for the U.S. and uh, awesome. had the opportunity to live in Charlotte, North Carolina, very early in my career. Then moved to, to China, was in charge of the Asian business, and then ran for close to 10 years the overall global sales and service responsibility. Wow. Ah, that's incredible. That's incredible. So you just so what was the first position that you actually had? Like, What was your day-to-day -day at DMG when you first started out? I was the assistant of this uh, mentor I just mentioned uh, for one year, and then he uh, gave me a flight ticket one day and said, Thorsten, we have a problem in the U.S. Um, you're going to be the next managing director for the East Coast of Hello. DMG. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> and Surprise. a week later, I was, uh, I actually flew into Atlanta, and yeah, the, the then still called managing director actually picked me up from the airport, Volker Spitz, a good friend of mine. Um, but he didn't know yet that I'm going to take his position on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was a fun ride back to Charlotte. I bet. It was a very long ride. Oh, man. Yeah, and you mentioned mentors, right? I think if we've all done this long enough, we, you can't do it in this industry without a great teacher, you know? And I think that was neat for me early on in my career, you know, having Bill Selway and Dan Selway and Bob Price, some of the guys that we came up in the industry. I didn't know machine tools, and, and having that mentor is such a big, big deal, especially in this industry because there's so much to learn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I had the um, w at that time we had in Charlotte a tech center, and that was for me actually the biggest advantage because I spent the weekends there uh, learning about the equipment, the machines, what they're capable of, learning all the different types of options, going through the quotations. Yeah, because at the end of the day, yes, we also need to sell equipment. Yeah, um, and. That was kind of, uh, for me, the biggest learning curve because I locked in myself with an application engineer and he gave me the, the full-blown training of what a machine tool can do. So you had no background in the machine tool industry. You came into it just looking to be in a sales position. Yeah, I, I, I studied um, business administration, uh, business to business. Um, sure. 
itself so um, had some overall knowledge but I'm not a educated engineer same so, yeah. so these weekends uh, yeah yeah that was quite a learning curve very cool very That's cool. awesome I always uh, there's there's like a quote that I actually it's actually something that uh, Bill Selway actually said and he said that if if you can solve people's problems you'll always be successful hundred percent yep and and looking at your education and looking at how you came in and and talking about the men like as soon as you started talking about having this mentor that that guided you along the ways uh, you lit up you know and and it was a special thing and you don't just become CEO of a huge company you have to it's all about relationships and it's about solving the right problems and being the guy that people can count on to go in there and solve those problems so for him to actually send you to the US and and make that you know ride down to Charlotte and and do all that you must have solved a lot of problems and he must have watched you and 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 really believed in you that hey this guy has it right yeah, well, things happen for a purpose. I remember one of my first machine tools in this new position, and that was 2003, was actually a laser machine, which I sold to the King of Jordan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I called Germany at that time and said, yeah, I have here an inquiry, because the King of Jordan actually was a big fan of Clint Eastwood. And he saw a movie where um, Clint Eastwood was handling a, a handgun. And at the end of the movie, the King of Jordan saw who made that gun. Oh and that gosh. was a guy in the Northeast, somewhere in, um, yeah, somewhere in New York State or Massachusetts or Connecticut. I don't remember. But he then called me and said, yeah, well, I need to produce this part here. And the... the, the the King of Jordan wants to produce this also in Jordan. And that was kind of my first machine tool. And I know I called Germany and uh, talked to the managing director in charge of the factory of that laser machine. Yeah. And he, he, he obviously hung up several times before I, <laughs> he took me serious. Yeah, that's, that's so awesome. Oh, so you stepped right in the oh, big leagues right there, getting great. everybody's attention. King of Jordan. Yeah. That yeah. is a good <laughs> story right that, there. That's awesome. Yeah, I that's love awesome. you. Yeah, there's Nigerian princes that try to send me money all the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> also good. Very good. I know. So, super good. So so you were at DMG Moore, you said, for 15 years? Yes. Awesome. And then uh, why Heller? It's a, a, a love at first sight immediately. Yeah. It happened. It's a very very beautiful technology oriented hidden secret of the industry no doubt yeah. it's a, it's a family owned business fourth generation 100% owned by the family of hella uh, 2600 employees wow. um, fully dedicated to just yeah develop and and manufacture beautiful pieces of equipment and actually solving problems for our customers and yeah, I mean, you were there, Titan. I hope you Stunning. saw that. Yeah. It's, it's something unique in this industry. There are not so many um, mid to large size companies um, anymore in this industry, which are uh, running through, yeah, with German engineering, right. which is a little bit of pity. And so I committed to, yeah, keep this company alive, develop it, uh, and, and average average duration of employment is over 20 years wow. of these 2600 people so right from the apprentice to the almost retired individual so uh, and the average 20 i think 22 and, and a half years uh, and that shows you what kind of commitment these employees are carrying in their heart. And what a great company, of course, taking care of their employees. You know, right? We see a lot of in the industry is so much turnover. Guys go here, there. That's, an, that's a very, very uh, just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's awesome just for Heller to be that strong of a company. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we went up to uh, their facility in uh, Michigan, there were people that had been there for 60 years. Hello, like, man. man. 60 years at the same company that's a yeah. impressive incredible so yeah. 
How, how old is Heller? It's about 129. Oh. 129. 129. Yeah. Unbelievable. So you guys have like 130 coming up. Mm -hmm. Yes, next wow, year. That's, that's incredible. An exciting year. You know, you have you have all these machine tools. Sometimes you go to you go to Emo or you go to IMTS and you see all of these companies and it's like there's so many of them and they're not even all there. And those machines go out to all these shops and yet people don't even know that manufacturing is king, that it builds everything that we see, you know? And for me, I like to say, I know a lot of people in this industry, but I didn't know Heller, you know? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I just didn't know. But the more that I learned, I also fell in love with it. And and then, then it was kind of almost like a sadness, man, because everything we're doing is here, we're here to promote and bring awareness to manufacturing. And and I'm like, here, here's one of the greatest machine tool companies of all time. And yet, if you talk to anybody in the U.S., they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And it's for the simple fact that if you go into Caterpillar, there's 120 Hellers, but they're not advertising it. They're not allowing cameras in the door. You go into Ford, you go into Cummings, you go into these big plants, Heller's solving all these problems, but the doors are shut. They'll talk about wanting to grow manufacturing. They'll talk about wanting to bring awareness and bring in our kids, and yet they won't show what is on their floor because they're they're out there. That's their competitive advantage. Yeah. So it's kind of hard because like yeah, yeah. they're keeping you a secret. So recently, I worked with you know Ken and the team up there. You know, so your CEO of the U.S. and um, we got to go in. We got to go into uh, Detroit Diesel. Hello. Oh, yeah. that was pretty crazy. <laughs> that, that, it's like what you said is you have all of these workers that have been working for so long at Heller. And I saw the same thing at Detroit Diesel. So they did something they never did before. And they opened the door. They let us in with the camera. My boy right here got to go, you know, and yeah. and we we walked through there and they had a 50, about 50 Hellers lined up. And they were so tight that you can't just go in and take one out. And it's like, if one goes bad, how do you replace it? <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, I, then, then you realize these things have been running since like 2006 or 2007, nonstop, 24 hours a day. They, that cell alone made over a million diesel engines. And if there's any issues, you guys actually put your service people and implant them into Detroit Diesel and they actually rebuild or do what it's needed to these machines right where they stand. You never take one out. You can just basically, if you want to rebuild the whole machine, you could just do it right there and keep it running. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, well, we have a joke that, you know, each Hella machine has more than one life because <laughs> yeah. the customer is refurbishing them and they they're still it's it's r truly a, a so machine that, and that doesn't break down that was surprising to me too is that you know talking to the guys at Detroit Diesel they said that you know they'll have a machine that's 30 years old and rather than buy a new machine that's they right. rebuild the old ones that's like crazy what, what other uh, machine tool builder do you know of that <coughs> does that most of the time after 30 years you just push the thing into the dumpster exactly and get a new one, 30 years that thing's toast ready for oh, yeah. the graveyard yeah yeah but not hellers gosh yeah they, well maybe they shouldn't last that long that we would sell <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 yeah. right exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> but, it, but it's good i mean we we're sitting in front of a heller right here it is an absolute monster with a whole pallet system the rsp hooked up to it and you know it, it's an honor to to teach on this machine and, and show people that hey no matter where you are in the world if you want to make your own parts and and be more competitive than anybody else you can actually do it by using the techniques that we're showing in our videos and using the right machines. And if you wanna go on the high level and you got hard materials and complicated materials, you need to hit high, tight tolerances, like this is where it's at and stuff, so. And know. the focus is is generally horizontal five axis. Is that it, that's that's the that's the platform. Yeah, that's a platform. Yeah. So we, we believe in, in high productivity, um, excellent ship fall, so, um, high rigidity yeah 24 7 lights out and of course i mean that also requires then a good expertise on the programming and operating side and titans yeah. of cnc is for us they are the partner to to 
cover the educational part in the U.S. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. I yeah. love your machines. They're awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, I love, too, that as we were walking through the shop earlier, he asked me, you know, what, what can we do better? And I have no response. Yo. There's, there's nothing that you can do better because I love everything about it. So. Well, well, that's not exactly <laughs> true. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. You know, well, they did make it pretty crash proof. Barry would know. You know, yeah, but right. I, I like when I when I was in Germany, they're like crash the machine. No, Peter Peter's like crash the machine, and then, and I'm like, you want me to crash the machine? And so of course I wouldn't crash the machine, but Barry's like, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, Let's see what this thing can do. But I actually I actually heard you talk about the ways. And you were you were saying that oh if there was like an adjustment, but the exact new machines that came out have the exact adjustment, and that was like awesome that you already did it. So yeah. I think that was like a trick question, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, plus I'm still here for another uh, couple of hours, so you can yeah. still think of what to improve. No, just super kidding. good. Of course, we were proud to to introduce a, a, a brand new machine tool at at the Emo exhibition just two weeks ago, um, and uh, we take these comments very serious that we get from our customers and our R&D department is traveling worldwide to visit um, with exclusive customers, get their input and implement those Good into that next generation. So, um, yeah. What the, better way to make the machine better? Like, you know, you always have to l- listen to the customer. To They're the ones using it. They're the ones coming up with these different jobs, different materials, different applications. If you're not listening to them, you're, you're stuck in first gear. You're not you're not going forward. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. I like a lot of people get into business and they, they make their shops and they think, you know, I have this plan on what I'm going to do. And yet. The plan always goes out the window always. because when you're in this industry, you you understand that you know over time your customers dictate your future. They dictate your future, and based 100%. based on the need, the application, and and what they're saying, you're going to pivot. So at one point, you guys did mostly fourth axis, and then as the technology, as the need, and everything came, then you guys now you're all fifth axis, right? Yeah, yeah, roughly Quit turning. Yes, with turning, yeah. So yeah, it's a middle turn beautiful. center, and it's roughly 50% of our machine tools are by now 5-axis simultaneous or 3 plus 2. And uh, wow, it's uh, for us b- cool because, I mean, honestly speaking, in the, in the past, Hella was very OEM and Tier 1 committed, um, but these machines are very universal machine tools. So um, we're now exploring all the additional yeah. potential and these new industries of, of course, for us, relatively new, but of course, beautiful applications. And it's exciting for, for my application engineers to um, yeah, see well, aerospace, exactly. uh, diamond mold, oil and gas, all these industries that uh, are uh, perfectly fitting to, to our product. Yeah, I think, cool. I think it's like, um, you you used to be with DMG Mori, and DMG Mori has uh, great people and great machines, and and they're like, they're huge. I don't I don't when people try to do a comparison, I don't actually think that they compare too much with Heller because I think that DMG Mori has its niche and it just has its breadth of machines, and and it's an amazing machine. But I think it's more in the the Makinos and the Okumas and the it's kind of in this whole string of premium machine where I see you guys more just one notch up. You know what I mean? And and that's why all these big companies, when they need somebody that goes for decades and decades and they need production to run, like they go to a heller. Yeah, and I, I wanted to mention, like I started off just talking like, I'm not here to dog DMG Murray because they're a great company, but when we went to Cheryl Marine, <laughs> that was funny, that tattoo. That you saw crazy. that. Yep. The Those guy actually guys. had DMG Mori tattooed oh, on his nice. bicep. What? And their entire shop was nothing but Hellers. Oh, my so, yeah, God. That's that a- says something, man. I mean, if you love a company enough to get their logo tattooed on your body. You got that right. then you buy the Hellers. because, And they said it was because they were better machines for less money. Yeah. So damn, I mean that's yeah. really and speaks. And I to think them. that anybody who's doing complicated work that needs to hit tight tolerances and needs that consistency, and then 
and then hard materials you know that you're gonna you're gonna be running ink and L, titanium you know heavy steels you're gonna be running non-stop day in and day out and something that just will not stop like the terminator yeah you know what i mean <laughs> Beast mode. Yeah, i mean that, and that's what heller is you know if you're running just only aluminum and their cheaper parts and the tolerances then maybe you go with a different machine but if it's le legitimacy on the top end yeah you gotta go yeah i was impressed you know I can't say too much about it, but we had a company in here recently doing some test cuts on the machine. It was Ren 88, and the, they wanted to see it actually cutting this part. And, you know, they wanted to see could it handle the torque, you know, could it handle everything. And it never even hit 50%. You know, wow. On the table. Wow. And, and other people could not make that cut. Right. And it was a four inch diameter drill going Hello. through a nickel alloy. I mean, hello. Yeah, it yeah. Was insane. That, is, that is insane. As Thorsten just smiles mischievously. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to add. Yeah. <laughs> <you know, that's, laughs> I funny. knew it would do it. Like, I've been yeah. doing this for almost 30 years now, and I had never heard of Heller until about. 10 or 15 years ago, I went into a Caterpillar plant in Shirts, Texas, and every single machine they had there was a Heller. And I was like, man, I've never heard of this company, you know? And <laughs> it was it was pretty neat to see. I mean, they, they had, I don't even remember how many machines it was, but it was somewhere between 50 and 100 all in a, yeah. in a row. They had the gantry set up. And at that point, I was like, man, I need to look, look into this company. And I actually interviewed with Heller uh, about 10 or 15 years ago for a service tech position. <laughs> Good thing Back that in didn't day, happen. I'm glad, yeah, they, I'm, I'm glad they didn't take <laughs> you. Right. I'm, I'm I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. So the platform starts at what, a 500 millimeter and goes to 1250? Is that your range? Yeah, that's about the sweet spot. Okay. But, I mean, we even go, we even go bigger. Um, wow. Depending on on what the customer needs, so, I mean it's it's something. But the 500 to to 800 to to a meter, yeah, is where well that's, that's our most home of what you, Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So is if you went above a 1250, then would that be like a special build? That's nothing that you're going to have something. Oh, we can turn this out. No, no, it's not a special build, but okay. it's an it's an extra large that then depends on yeah how far the customer wants yeah. to go. And as we are um, machining almost all the components by ourselves um, wow. we have fully integrated the, yes fully integrated we have there the opportunity to also service special demands and sometimes it, it ends up being a, a, a fully customized piece of equipment that we're even uh, uh, machining and assembling then amazing you know yeah. one thing that i really love about heller over dmg is the service aspect you know i mean we used to have so many problems getting service from dmg and the nice thing with Heller is even though you're a German-owned company, you guys have your factory in Michigan, so you're able to build a machine basically from scratch right here in the U.S., and that's a big deal for a lot of people. Big deal. Em you employ, you got over 100 employees in yeah. Michigan? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's 150 people, and, um, yeah, for us it's with this, the, the, the cool thing is that, of course, y you learn when you're working with OEMs, automotive, you learn the hard way yes. that uh, 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 downtime is unacceptable. <laughs> it's unacceptable. <Yeah. laughs> so we are using or, or we are now transferring these kind of characteristics of lights out, um, tough material, high productivity, a lot of shipfall, yeah. um, removal re requirements. And we're transferring these characteristics now into the other industries. Fantastic. And for us, um, yeah. I mean, and I would tell you if that's the case, but during the this year i did not have a single complaint of any user of heller machines i talked to i have not received even a phone call or an email Amazing. with someone saying this is uh, unacceptable Thorsten, and help us out <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and we did a, it's funny because we did a, um, a questionnaire of our existing customers and uh, we asked them of the performance criteria and uh, the german school grades uh, go from one to six and one is excellent and six is uh, yeah you got to do it again <laughs> a kind of thing and uh, actually the overall average of all the different challenging criteria in regards to also to spare part uh, availability or hotline quality and 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 was below two so wow. really really good um actually we did the same questionnaire to our own employees how do you think our customers are judging us and there 
our own employees judged ourselves more critical than the customers. Amazing. So uh, welcome in s southern Germany where, yeah. where <laughs> awesome. uh, our own people are thinking that we still have room for improvement. Yeah. And of course, everyone has for sure. But Always. this after sales and uptime is, is key. And yeah, um, it's just a... Like you say, okay. automotive, it's seconds count. So if it's it's if it's down, I mean, they they are freaking out. I'm sure. But that's that's you know, back in the day, used to, oh, don't sell on service. In your, you know, uh, game, service almost maybe isn't even a requirement. Yes, it's needed, of course, support, and you always got to have that. But if the if the uptime is that much, man, that is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's it, it helps uh, to have then one R and D team sure. and not too many different ones. So it's all engineered. The R and D team is in Germany, so you have um, a, a certain level of yeah utilizing a, a modular way of of uh, developing your product. And then we have overall five factories. So we cover South America, North America, Asia, and China, and then two factories in Europe. So this yeah. this factory local for local approach, of course clearly focuses then also on, on providing spare parts and uh, service personnel on time. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. When um, I like to say that, you know, we're, we're a small company, but I don't think anybody has a bigger sense of what the industry thinks than us because we get to talk to all of your customers, but every other customer from every other machine tool and, you know, all the variables and manufacturing and, and we have the biggest community of um, machinists and one of the things is <laughs> when there might be a company that I'm that we're working with and I'm always like very open and upfront you know and, and a lot of people on the top end they they won't get the information from the lower guys like the middle managers like to say that hey we have a problem that means they're not doing their job so you know some of these big tooling companies and stuff the top level won't get the information from the smaller guys, yep. but those guys message us and those guys go in all the different platforms that we have and they actually state things. If I say something and, and they don't agree, they'll actually tell you and stuff. So I always share that information with the top level people because I, I end up talking to these guys. and. I'll say, and then you're always in the comments oh, yeah. along with always. me, and we're always talking, but there is nobody that puts down Heller. At all. Nobody at all, period. And that, on the internet, everyone is torn down. So <laughs> it's true. So for you not to get any complaints, and then in the media where nobody's scared, they, they're going to put it out there. Everybody has 100% respect, and that gives me a lot of confidence on teaching on this platform. You yeah, know? same. And, you know, one of the things that impresses me, too, is Heller's commitment to education. And when Titan went over there to Germany and, and filmed your apprentices actually building a little five-axis machine yeah. from the ground up, I mean, I thought that was awesome. And, you know, talking with Melanie, you know, I know how dedicated she is to the ed education aspects. And it's really a breath of fresh air because not everybody gets how important the education uh, is. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Got to have it. Yeah. Well, we yeah, we, we educate since yeah, almost like the, the whole existence of, of the company. We've been educating our own personnel from from scratch. And of course, I mean, the, 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 yeah, the fight for talents is, is clearly there. Um, even or also in, in Germany, honestly, and, and therefore it's uh, for us extra important to early on get a hand on, on key individuals and to, to build their career and to give them that perspective of, of seeing in which direction they want to want to move. And uh, there of, yeah, uh, with our global setup and by going from R&D through production, um, assembly, uh, sales, service, so we have the opportunity to then provide a path Love it. Um, that gives someone a chance to develop in the direction where he feels home. So you guys see the same issues we have here, skills gap, you, but you guys still have apprenticeship programs through the company itself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, are, we are having um, about 50 people every year which are being added and, wow. and they go into different, come from either um, yeah, uh, more, more school, also university, college opportunities, and and uh, we're just uh, happy that Hella has that brand and no that doubt. opportunity. So, um, 
and word spreads. Um, so in this area where generations before also already worked for that company. So um, it's something. Do you have anybody like that within the company? You 130 years old. It's been four generations of of, of families that have gone through your your company. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if That's the fourth amazing. generation yeah. already was there, but three generations three gen for, we, for sure we have. Yes. So cool. And we, That's so good. We even organize uh, days for the retired employees so that they can still come in the in the comp in the factory, and um, yeah. Uh, have a coffee and a oh, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> very I, uh, cake. I think I think it's great that um, I, so just recently in July I went and I actually filmed it at Heller and then a year before that I had filmed so there's two videos out there go look later on go look up those videos they're absolutely amazing and, and watch them one of the sometimes I get in trouble and <laughs> <laughs> sometimes because, because because I'm we're fighting to pull education into the future and people that don't understand this industry, they're, they're excited that our young people will just be excited to be in industry, and that's enough. And then, and then they'll put them on manual machines because that's what they did for years, and they'll finally get them up there, and, and they'll do little pockets and a few holes and, and make a couple parts their entire career, like school year and and they'll be amazed because they don't understand the trade and they think that wow you're running this very complicated machine and you're making something and that's good enough where i come from the side and i'm like look that really like at the end of the day this this young person is going to come out of school and they're going to want to make money and get an apartment and get a car and pay bills and they can't with that knowledge and you're holding them back because you're thinking of what you can comprehend. But with the right education, th like these kids grow up on phones. They grow up on computers. They grow up on technology. They're so smart and yep. you're forcibly holding them back and they're capable of so much more. So we're, I'm like three axes. Everyone can do three axes. You can learn three axes in days and, and, and stuff. And, and if it's taught right, like, that's already obsolete, and that's the best that you guys are doing, Isn't even in college. Yeah. Even in college. Yeah. So, as I go through the world, I I love going to these big companies, and and I always like you watch the videos. I always go and look at the apprentice. I always ask about the education, and I'll go over there and I'll go talk to them and stuff. And I I this I'm not getting paid for this or anything, but I have not seen a better apprenticeship program then at Heller. And the reason, a simple reason is that when I went over there, I always see students, I always see them on a computer, I always see them on manual machines and, and making different things and stuff. But when I went to Heller, they were making intricate parts that assembled together columns and tables and, and all these brackets and they assemble together to make a five axis machine. That is great. With a full Siemens control, all full five axis. And so you're gonna work, when I walk through Heller, I'm talking to guys and they're like 29 years old and they're like, oh yeah, I did my apprenticeship here. You know, so you see the different <laughs> levels and, the, and they're actually making five axis machines. So why shouldn't the kids be making five axis machines. 100%. Why? Yeah, 100%. If, if, we're, if SpaceX needs employees and is willing to pay all this money and Blue Origin needs employees and is willing to pay all this money, why are we forcing our kids not to be able to get that job? Yeah, agreed. By not teaching them anything. Agreed. So, yeah. <laughs> big smile on, on Thorson's face. <laughs> they can do five axis. So, I'm not putting too much out, but we've been talking about you know, ways to make it inexpensive to bring five axis curriculum in a way similar to Germany. And, and we're trying to figure some things out to bring it to the US so that we can actually make it, I like how you said it, make five axis accessible to all. Yeah, I think that's a future. I mean, it has um, to be, it yep. has to be the, the parts are getting more, more complex, uh, uh, the controls get more powerful. You want to uh, reduce setups, um, and uh, that's all about then the accuracy and and of course on a on a five axis machine tool. And yes, we 
Um, we call this a the it's a, it's is that I don't know is that an American word profi trainer profi <laughs> trainer <laughs> profit so trainer we may need to change that word <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll come up with something good and yeah my goal is um, overall I I lived 12 years in America um, and I really I'm going to be personally responsible for that project fantastic we're going to make that accessible for schools. Uh, we're going to identify the best trainers, the best trainers who are also ready to, to educate themselves also further because, yeah, they, they need them to be the multiplier and it's going to be an exciting journey so coming good. up. So Gabe, Gabe Coors, I got your... Hello. Oh, man, I was, I was already talking to the CEO of Heller about you, man. <laughs> What's <laughs> up? <laughs> That's so the guy from Michigan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. See, so these See? companies literally they could buy the profit trainer as 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 a kit as a kit and use this to start their own apprenticeship programs. That is, and that's yeah, and it, and it's a full five axis simultaneous machine tool. So it's not uh, it's not made out of plastic. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, yeah. You, you, you make true parts on them. Very yeah. cool. So they could use it after they've done they've done they're done building it. Exactly. It's a usable machine. You make your own machine. That's so crazy. That's the, crazy. The focus is like you'd already have a few machines. Sure. And then this would come as a kit. And basically determinations have to be made. Right now, Heller actually does all the electrical. The kid the kids do all the electrical. They they do all aspects of the machine. But to come over here to go into the machining programs, the, the discussions that Thorson and his team have to have is like, what should we pre-assemble? Sure. Because maybe this sure. uh, machining program doesn't have the knowledge and capability to do the electrical, for instance, you know? So what, how, how far do we have to take it to make it so then they can actually have all these components, which we then, like the, this is the dream. Right. This is the vision that we would have tutorials to actually make the column. We would give you the material, would give you the full, you know, documentation, everything supporting the build of that, the build of the table, the build of all these different little components that make up the rest of the machine. And then the kids during the school year would actually use the other machines to machine all these different parts and they make a third machine. Amazing. And that third machine would be a five axis machine and their knowledge in making it would make them know it like the back of their hand. And therefore, when they become a CNC machinist, like five axis working at one of these big companies, they would be so comfortable because they understand they it, get from it. They get it through and through. Yep, absolutely. It's, it's literally brilliant. And, and that's why I say like, when I went to Heller, you know what I mean? Look at a big smile every time. <laughs> Dude, you see those kids, and they are making five axis machines. It blows your mind. We're That's teaching crazy. kids to like, and then people get mad if I, I <laughs> say something it negative. Yeah. And it's like, look. That's great that we have more schools now coming up, but you still have to keep them accountable so these students can make money. And, and it's not good enough to be, if they're an apprentice at a big company, like going to Detroit Diesel and be an apprentice, they need to be a pillar. Yeah. And yeah. they're capable, it's us holding them back, but we need the right education to teach them. And they grow up on technology. They'll kill it. They're oh, way yeah. smarter than we were when we were young. Guarantee that. Yeah. And you know, we Super. talk a lot about how NIMS is a cancer to our <laughs> industry. And uh, yeah, I'll get in trouble now. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's true. I mean, if, if somebody comes out of school and they bring me a NIMS certificate, it means nothing to me. It's like, sure. congratulations, you can make a rectangle. But <laughs> if somebody comes to me and says, it's yeah. Like, it's like you're, you're applying for a mission as chef, but you can cut carrots. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Right, you know I mean? right. But if you come to me and you say, hey, you know, I just got out of school and, you know, I built a five axis machine from scratch. Hello. It's like, whoa, okay, you know, let's, let's take a closer look at this resume here. Yeah. So I, I think it's a really awesome idea and an awesome uh, program that you guys yeah. have. It's going to take some work. And then I think, well, We've already been talking with Siemens because, that, I mean, one of the expensive parts of the machine is is the control. Of course. You know, yep. and to have a full Siemens control for all five axis, you know, that's not a cheap thing and nope. stuff. But we were talking, you know, we were talking, I know Thorson's talked to him and then I have talked to him and um, they're all about it. They're all about you know, like getting those controls in front of the kids and um, letting them learn on the best, you know. Yeah. Well, Super. especially because they just brought out also a new control. Which, uh, Cinemaric. Cinemaric one. Yep. And that's obviously a big jump in regards to the productivity 
increase and and potential and uh, yeah to make this uh, common knowledge yeah i think yeah w when we put our heads together um, it'll be a, an exciting project but we have all the resources and that we require to make this happen it'll just grow organically if you start with the kids right and they're learning on scene america then why would they not go into industry on under the same umbrella i mean that's that's how you grow it organically get it to the kids at a young age this program has got to be you know out there it's got we got to bring that 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 education and that that platform here yeah it's so, great sounds good, amazing man. so good uh, um, you were talking about, I want to like jump back. You were talking about how you guys do all of it, all of the machine, all of the machining, everything is basically in house. One of the things that I was super impressed with and that I actually highlighted in the videos was that you guys make your own spindles and not a lot of people. We've had other big machines here, which had different spindles in them and I love that you guys make your own spindles and you have a new spindle that just came out Ooh. and uh, Hello. it's got mm. some crazy power and all that. And then he was, he was, there's like a, a way to calculate it. That's a little bit different and stuff to actually have it kind of stay on that top end for a long time and stuff. So anything you can say about that? Yeah. The, the great thing about this spindle is that actually the, um, yeah, we are using uh, also their identical components for different types of spindles. So talking about, uh, yeah, requirement uh, to, to exchange uh, certain spindles or to, to upgrade and uh, therefore, yeah, that's that's uh, the, the new HSK spindle. Very cool. That we also presented at Emo and uh, hopefully we'll have it here quickly also in your shop. Boom. HSK uh, 100, 63? Yeah, both. Both. Yes. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. We don't want the 63. Yeah. yeah. No, I, we want I, the I, like, we like I know We like that. big tools. Yes, <laughs> no, 125. Yeah. Oh, man. So good. So I know you're going to be catching a plane here in just a couple of hours and we have we have a we have students we have leaders we have machinists we have a lot of people that just aspire to be great in this in this industry is there throughout your years of running these companies and doing big things is there any principles or any advice that uh you that you would share that common folks can use you know well i i, I hope i <laughs> i'm common so yeah yeah um, I'm, I'm just but, um yeah i mean my my suggestion would be to truly try to to push the envelope every day yeah, um, every to day. to clearly go beyond what you think is is possible and um i just actually came from from california where uh, there was a, a Porsche reunion um, uh, festival, and uh, Hella is a technology partner of Porsche nice. of the long duration car. And Very cool. um, we are doing this partnership also because there you see, when you see this car racing, and that's a car that goes on the 24 hour Le Mans, it's one car that drives 24 hours absolutely to its limit and beyond. Wow. And it's a combination of technology and knowledge and communication of team so that this car is actually they are using components which are produced on Heller machines Very so awesome. this is for me a, a, a good analogy of what, what can be done if you're really going beyond what you think is possible and maybe sometimes even Porsche sorry to say sometimes even breaks down <laughs> but but you're learning from yeah. your mistakes you're yep. learning by pushing that envelope and and uh, throughout my career i can only give that advice to everybody every day is a new opportunity to push the envelope no doubt. you know what great like, stuff he just inspired me why don't we see if we can get this thing up to 2300 oh man, yeah. oh, man. let's do it yeah. let's do it you won't know unless you try i know i know i like the envelope we were um there's a book what's what's the book that you guys are all reading uh uh, ah, no, no, unreasonable, unreasonable hospitality. Unreasonable hospitality, and in a yeah, in, in another podcast, on uh, Dave, Dave mentioned it, and that's something that we want to do in the industry is we w we want to be unreasonable in how much class we we have and how much help and how we serve the industry, how we teach the industry, and always I talking to these guys about being in the comments and like putting that extra time out there and like. 
just uh, so this book is kind of like meant got it for all the employees. So they there it's kind of like uh, mandatory reading in a way. Yeah. We got but everybody wanted it. Book. Yeah, and, <laughs> but it, but it's but in the book, there's there's a point, and you guys probably haven't got it because I had the book uh, early on, and it's a point where this guy like, f- oh the the economy is crashing the oh eight oh nine, mm-hmm. and and stuff and and. There's the writer of the book, he goes to his dad and he's, he's like talking about like just this whole collapse and stuff. And, and the dad's just like talking about adversity and, and, and everything. And he's, he's like, this is probably the greatest, most defining moment of your life. Don't waste it. Yeah. Don't waste it. You're losing everything. You don't have enough money. You don't have, like, you can't keep paying the bills. You might have to lay people off. This is a great time in your life. You will look back at it. Don't waste this. Defining moments. Defining moments. And then it goes through him, like, taking that advice and going through every, every part, all the food and how they order and, like, just, just, and he, he makes it become inefficient. Yeah, he makes it so efficient. They end up keeping all the employees, and then, then they end up like becoming one of the world's best from all mm-hmm. those decisions that were made during the trials. You know, so it's like you might think things are impossible. It goes right in line with what you said. Don't don't just look at what you know. Dream big and go after the impossible every single day. And, uh, thank you very much, man. Thank you for the partnership. We could not oh. give free education to you guys if it wasn't for our amazing partners. Uh, Heller, man, thank you very much. Thorsten, it's great to have you. <laughs> Melody, oh, uh, Melody, what's up? <laughs> Melody's in the background and uh, supervising. I know. And then she, uh, yeah, she really did talk mad smack to Donnie. So, yeah, Donnie <laughs> yeah. was trying to like say no. We but called it him ha- out again. Then it happened again. Again. Oh, so boom. good. The so it. good. Yep. <laughs> she, got, she got on my good side with just talking smack to Donnie. <laughs> I know. I know. You, can you come on camera real quick? Come over here. Come, come over, over and <laughs> say hello. Oh. There she is. The smack talker. Oh, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> so good yeah. so are you able to see her so this is melanie and i've actually my uh my wife got to hang out with her when i was in germany two different times and took took the family you know took my kids doing different things and stuff so we've gotten to know each other and then beyond that she handles a lot of different things for heller but you're kind of overseeing education and stuff. So when we're talking about the the profit trainer and the five axis machine, um, there is work going on in the background, and uh, she's actually heading it up with uh, Thorsten. Thorsten runs the entire company and stuff. So just letting you guys know, like there's this whole amazing team, and you are amazing. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom. So good. Make and it thank happen. you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, pleasure having you. Guys. I like how she said. Don is like you're in the most spectacular part of the the entire company, the Swiss department, and she's like, no, like Heller, Heller's right over there, like <laughs> big chips, baby, uh. <laughs> telling it like it is, <laughs> not glitter, boom. And with that, we're out. Yeah, boom. thank you. Peace.